Yeah, this is your boy, the man Crown Heights, the Big Zoe. Everybody call me Pastor. My name is Pastor Sander Camo. And today I want to celebrate a wonderful person, a great soul, who should have been celebrated long overdue. Um, somebody who meant the world to me, someone who uplifted me, someone who inspired me to be better. If you was around him, he wanted you to be better. He wanted you to be great. A very selfless individual, a true gentleman, a true gangster. My man, Macho. Um, I'm celebrating him today. I'm doing a tribute video for him because it's been two years since he's passed away. Um, he got his life taken away violently for something so petty. Um, his wife was very selfish and huh, it hurts, it's sad, it's tragic, but I wanna focus on his life of how much he meant to me and how much he meant to others. So I'm just doing a little uh, video just to let him know, listen, I miss you, I love you, I appreciate you, my brother. You mean the world to me, and we're gonna get to it. Let's get it, we're at 836 Crown Street. Come on, let's go up to the top. So right now we in my hood, this is my hood. This is Crown Street. 836 Crown Street is where I'm from. 826 with my man Saeed is from as well too. Uh, my man Ryan, also 825. I grew up with a lot of street legends from Chris Crown, E. Holla, Nam Denali, the whole UAP, the whole fam, the whole young fam, PSP. This is Zoblock. So right now we about to go up on Hilltop. That's President Street. Mind you, this is like different places in regards to Crown Heights, like the different sections. So I'm in Crown Street. You got Crown Street. Then in the bottom, you got Montgomery. Next you got Carroll, then you got Hilltop President, then after that you got you got you got Union. Um, what's one thing I could describe about Machoke as a person? Um, there's many things, but one thing I loved and admired about him was that he was very selfless. He was very giving. He thought about others before he thought about himself. And that's what made him a boss. Because he thought about others before he thought about himself. Yo, Papi! Mr. Vassal, what's going on, my guy? You good? Respect, man. Wow. Let's kick a bed. Yeah. yeah, but we walk in, we enjoying the heights, man. So we doing. So eight two six Trust is right here. A lot of a lot of a lot of good legends group here too. For me, eight two five Crown Street. A lot of legends group here as well, too. Over there on that side, if you could turn and look at that side. What's good, Cuzzo? Love you, cuz. You feel me? So, we outside with it. Celebrating my man, March. Let him know that, you know. I appreciate him. I'm thinking about him always. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, what thing he, he, he taught me, you know what I'm saying, in regards to what I was saying to you. Like I said, lie. What from Zo? My oh, guy, Rip. Rip. <laughs> you know the vibes. Love you, boy. Love, love, yeah, love, love, love. We in the hood and everything like that. Yeah, so. Oh, yeah, so in regards to what I was saying in regards to him being selfless, like, that's what it means to be a boss, you know? You, you want to be a boss, you got to take care of other people. You want to be a boss, you got to put each other, you got to put people in position. That's what he taught. He showed. You know, he taught. He taught and he showed by example. And if you if you really a boss, you gotta put people in position, and you gotta you gotta feed people, teach them how to fish, and he always ex he always exemplified that he always exemplified that, and um, that's why we're talking about him today. I want to just talk about another thing too about Macho too. Also, um, how was my interaction with him? Well, there's different phases. Um, back in the day, I used to rap with a group called UAP. And it was like a lot of big figures on my block. What's good, Unk? You good? I'm doing this documentary for my truck right now. For me? Love you, Unk. Matter of fact, I represent. For me? Take off on big zone. Let's spare. Uba? I'm doing a documentary for my man Macho. I'm doing okay. a video tribute for him. This is my guy right I'm here. I'm proud of you, y'all. No, I appreciate always, you. Always, I love always. you, man. I gotta make you proud. Keep up, keep up the good work. I ain't gonna yo. let you down. I ain't gonna let you down. I ain't gonna let you down. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So I want to talk about um, my interactions with Macho. 
Um, there are like different phases of my life in regards to him. So we could start with the Young Fam and Fam um, PSP UAP experience. So I started rapping straight after um, Biggie died. I'm assuming I was like in like the third or the fourth grade. I'm assuming. I think the third or the fourth grade. I think fourth grade. Or before Biggie died, but yeah. During that time. And I remembered when, um, you know me, like I said, I, I was always into poetry. I was always into writing. Um, I was very um, eccentric as a kid. I, I dreamed big. I thought big. And, um, you know, being loud, <laughs> being radical, still hasn't changed. Um, what happened with, with that was my interaction with Machoke was always a big brother elevating a little brother. It was always that type of vibe. So what? He, whatever, I mean, you know, he was doing his thing with President Street, President Street Posse. There was a fighter, stand-up guy, man of respect, man of integrity, man of humility. Um, every time I saw him, it was always like, yo, your ass kick around for me. And boy, he would love when I kicked around for him. Every moment, every time. And it was love. The love was 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 mutual. The respect was mutual. The admiration was mutual. Um, it was mutual. It was it was always love and it was always respect. And as he got older, you know, 16, getting money. <clears throat> getting money. One of the first young guys in the heights buying a car. Not only buying a car, but buying other cars for his mans. That 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 was something. That was something for real, for real. Cause the thing is that like you're 60 years old, you buy, you know, you bought yourself a car, now you're buying your man's cars. And you making sure your man's is driving, and you making sure your man's is getting money. Boy, that's 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 boss status. He had his own camp, he had his own operation, getting money, hustling, being about his business, getting on the grind. For me, doing what he need to do. For me, my man was so much about his business, like his um, you know, he came from Jamaica, his uh grandmother listen to this his grandmother he took care of his own grandmother now he took his care of his own grandmother but he also helped her with the money that he he got he hustled he basically um helped her to get a daycare center what's good my boy yo today we, we celebrate macho you heard no celebrate macho these are my big homies right. in my neighbor you heard right, right, in the high school there. yeah respect respect the big homie for me so yeah like that's big bro 60 years old take care your grandmother, boy, I'm telling you, for me. And as I transitioned from rapping into preaching, <clears throat> he was like, yo, he was like, yo, your pastor, are you sure this is what you want to do? Your S, are you sure you want to, are you sure this is what you want to do? You feel me? Are you sure this is what you want to do? I'm like, yeah, this, I'm sure I, this is what I want to do, for me? So as I was elevating myself in regards to my path and what I wanted to do, he was elevating himself and being a big businessman and putting and putting people in position and taking care of grown men. Grown men. My real taking care of grown men. For me, making sure that people didn't have making sure that people didn't have to do crack, all that. Make sure that people didn't have to live off the street. That's what it's about, man. That's what it's about. What's good, Kozo? What you dealing with, boy? Good to see you, my guy. Oh, let's go. Good to see you, boy. So um, that was that phase, you know, the rapping phase. Like I told you, there was always respect. There was always admiration. There was always love um, for me and him. Then there was the preaching phase, going into ministry. That was another phase right there. And, you know, at first, he was like, okay, you sure you want to do this because you used to, used to rap? But now you want you want to preach just just you know 
if you're gonna do this, do this for real. And, I, and at the time, I, I, I did it for real. I did it for real, for real. This is the neighbor right here. You, you to come and, and President Street, right here, Hilltop. Cry has legends, Brooklyn legend. And I remember when I um, was going to school, going down to school to Alabama. Him and Ihala, they made money together. Getting money, hustling, getting money together. Those were the guys that walked down with me. It was like, yo, bro, just when you when you get into that path, you know, even though we're doing what we're doing, don't forget us. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget us. I mean, they were selling weed. That's what they were selling. I mean, you know, weed is legal now, so it's something illegal. I'm saying about that. So that's what they were selling. They were selling weed. Um, just don't forget us. Don't forget where you come from. Don't forget your peoples. Don't forget your foundation. They always drilled that to me. Don't forget. And like I said, you know, preaching around across the country, um, doing a lot of community initiatives, the respect and the love and the admiration just, it grew. It just kept on growing to the point where now you have a situation now, instead of being a rapper, you feel me? Why you go to Arizona? We're actually conversing. Like we are conversing. We are conversing. We're, we're, we're building. You understand? What's good, my guy? Good to see you, boy. Yeah, what's good? I'm doing the macho. I'm doing the macho. You know, macho died two years ago. I'm doing a macho tribute today. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm doing. It's been two years since he died. So it's only right that I do it. You feel me? I'm just, I'm just talking from my experience of how he made me feel. I can only do that. You feel me? Yeah, for me, respect, big homie. You gotta do the right thing, bro. Now you crazy, you feel me? So yeah, so um, yeah, bro. You know, just talking every day at this time. You know, he's getting he's getting his smoke shop. Now that he has a smoke shop. He also has his record label. Then he also has his car business, and he's also talking to other people out of state, helping people to get into position, make money, win, ain't greedy, reasonable, just as a real boss is supposed to be. Boy got married, boy had a daughter, boy had a crib, boy had cars, boy had a bike, boy had a smoke shop, Boy, um, also, um, you know, Tamika wasn't working. His wife, he took care of Tamika. He also um, took care of Tamika's mother. Boy, what, 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 what bad can I say? Like, what, like, how could you not give a a, a guy like that credit? That, that, that is, that's, that's, that's a dope guy right there. A wonderful individual. You know, so, yeah, that's what it is. So why was he so feared, loved, and respected? Well, he was loved because, you know, he made sure a lot of his people ate. He had his camp, he had his crew, um, people who he put in position, people who he, look, he looked out for, and those guys didn't play at all. It was about their business, it was about their work. Um, he was loved because if he ate, you ate. That's the type of vibe that, the type of time he was, he was on. He was respected because it was a matter of integrity. What he said he was going to do, he was going to do. And honestly, even though Macho was a man of peace, he was, a, he was a man not to also be played with as well too. You feel me what I'm saying? Um, fear, like the people he was running with. Like, you, you can't play with those boys. You see what we are, what we are here. You guys not to be played with, period. You feel me? So... He put a lot of brothers in position. My man was a kingpin. My man was, was a sweet soul, a good soul, a stand-up individual. So that's why we up here. We, we better go to this building right now. We better go to this building right now. Machuk also had a funny side too. He liked to laugh. He liked to joke around with you. He liked to dance. Um, I remember we used to be like this. <laughs> and then it's like, ho, ho, ho. Who told you I'm the boss? Who told you I'm the boss? I'm like, yo, Macho, I know you're the boss, but who told you that? You're right, man, I am the boss. So, you know, he, 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 he loved when, 
when Jenny went to see her brothers, you feel me, toot his own horn and, and tell him, you know, how much he's great. You know, this is, this is his hood. This is the foundation right here. This building right here. My man right here, up here. This, this, way, this way it started from. Um, his personality was magnetic. He had a very calm, cool demeanor, but he could be hype as well too. Um, you know, he spoke like, if I, if I could like compare him, I would compare him to like a guy like Master P. That's what I've always compared him to. You feel me? That's what I compared him to, a Master P. And he called me Tom Hagen because I used to, to always advise him, you know, we would pray together. We would speak about a lot of things that I don't want to talk about in camera. Things that are, you know, they're discreet. Um, you know, the, the respect, as I said, was mutual. The love was mutual. Um, it, was, it was just genuine, authentic. We prayed a lot together. We affirmed each other. We uplifted each other. We encouraged each other. And I told him that too. And I was like, yo, listen, you know, everybody has their own path. But some people gotta figure things out, gotta get things right. You know what I'm saying? Why you saw him going to Arizona, getting his store, getting his wife a hair salon. You feel me? He 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 doing what he needs to do. And he's still putting people in position to get this money. Well, he put a lot of people in position. Like, and he had workers, you know what I'm saying? And he had a record label and he had a, a car service and he was just elevating, elevating, elevating himself. Let's go a little bit more closer. Um, one more thing I love about, about Macho too is I admired his loyalty. I admired how you know that if, if you ever needed him, he would be there for you. You wouldn't even have to ask him. And if he loved you, genuinely loved you and if he genuinely fucked with you he had you you didn't even have to ask him he would be there for you he was just a good good person when it came to that for me and that's what it, what it means a lot of times people, people talk about being a boss you don't put nobody in position you don't make nobody you don't, you don't make sure nobody eat you're not a boss <laughs> you feel me when you put people in position you make sure they they eating and they good and you taking care of them taking care Grown men, grown men, making sure they good, make sure that they live. That, that's, that's, that's what it's about, man. No honesty. So we about to go to this building. Today we're making a tribute. Um, this is my tribute um, to my brother March. Let him know how much I love him, how much I celebrated, how much he my everything. And anybody wanna be down in regards to say to say so we could do a part two and part three but it's my tribute to my friend and my experience with him for me 1745 president street the birth of a great one of a legend a crown heights legend a brooklyn legend a man macho yeah there will never be another macho yeah you're from my mouth to your ears I had to celebrate you, bro. So why would I consider March to be a Crown Heights legend, a Brooklyn legend? Because he was young and he was getting a lot of money, making a lot of money and putting a lot of people on this block, a lot of people in this hood in position and it was getting money with him and he was doing big things, he was doing great things, he was doing things that nobody could imagine a 16 year old would be doing, you feel me? And um, that's why I consider him to be a legend. And he put a lot of people in position and he never stood anybody wrong. And he always made sure that he wanted his friends and his family, he wanted them to win. You follow what I'm saying? That's what's so amazing and, and beautiful about who he was as an individual. Oh, look at my boy. Boom, 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 boom. Big zone, my man wrong moves. Boy, if y'all don't know, right here, this is the big zone stepper, yeah? Crown Heights legend, Hilltop legend, my guy right here, yeah? One of Macho's right hand men, yeah? You gotta That's mention good. my man. <laughs> if you gonna mention Macho, yeah? There's a lot of others, yeah? You feel me? 
Dead, you feel me? Dreads. <laughs> Shout out to the legends. All the legends, yeah. yeah. Max, Rex, everybody, yeah. Oh, I, shit, I, I, could, I could go more and more with some names, yeah. Skank, boy. Oh, let me start, boy. Squirt. Yeah, Squirt. Uh, boy, if you got to mention. Rhino, yeah, oh, Rhino, too. All oh, my legends, but Woo! <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. Woo! Talk your talk. Talk your talk. Talk your talk. That's a fact. So y'all leave room for me because I'm on my way. Yo, no. yo, this is your boy, the man Cry Heights, the big zone with a Cry Heights legend, a Brooklyn legend, my man Wrong Moves, Hilltop legend. Hilltop. Yo, yo, listen, quick question. Why would you consider Macho to be a, a Cry Heights legend? Because he paid the way. Word? For all of us, you know what I mean? The crazy shit about Macho, man. He always put his, he always make sure we was all good. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Ain't nothing he wouldn't do for us, ain't nothing we wouldn't do for him. Me and him, my brother, used to call us three musketeers. Because anytime you see one of us, you see another two. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I knew Mancho when I was 11 years old, 12 years old, man. Wow, wow. He used to always tell me, yo, Romo, I ain't going back to Jamaica fighting with my cousin with over one can of sardine, you heard? And that was his motivation. You understand? Wow. And he never turned back. You heard? I remember the first day we got locked up. <laughs> His mom's passed away that day. He ain't shed not one tear. I looked at him and said, boy, you cold hearted, man. You know How your mom's passing, you don't got no tears coming out your eyes, you know I said, boy, you a different breed, man. You know He said, y'all don't know how to absorb this shit, you know Get locked up, my mom's died on the same day. I was 12 years old, them niggas 13. They had me by a year, you know Best friend in the world, you know what I mean? Wow. Miss that nigga. Still miss him, think about him every day, you know? If he was here, I'd never be broke. You know? That's how powerful he was, you know? Wow. Cool. Niggas think I'm the legend, man. <laughs> you should have meet the niggas that I grew up with. <laughs> wow, that's dope. Yo, if you, if you, wow, I don't, I'm lost for it. If you had a word to describe my joke, what would it be and why? If I had words to describe Mancho, what would it word. be and why? Mm -hmm. Powerful. Why, why powerful? Mancho was smart, just like me. We was the smartest out the bunch. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Shout out to him, you heard? We been there, done that. Ain't nothing we ain't been through or go to. He was smart, smart. He wasn't the craziest one, but he was the smartest one. <laughs> you know? We was more crazy, more headless. Ain't nothing we wouldn't do for him. He ain't had to access the door. We, me and my brother jump out the window any time for him. Wow. But we always look at a nigga, we born here, we coming back home. Wow. You, know, you ain't sending you back to Jamaica, you know? <laughs> Okay. The next question, go ahead. Um, how was your interaction with him, you know? Um, when you chill with him, how did he make you feel as a person? Alive, man. Ain't nothing my boy will do for me, yo. Sorry, Ain't nothing sure. I will do for him, yo. That's a fact. That's that a nigga fact. different, bro. Niggas think I'm different. Shout out to niggas that grew up with me, that paid the way for me to have it the way I got it, yo. Know? Facts. Because he one of them niggas, man. Whew. Why you think he was so loved? Why you think he was so loved? Why you think he was so feared? Why you think he was so loved first? Feared and respected. Why you think he was so loved? And appreciate it, bro. I know, bro. It's, it hurts, bro. It hurts, bro. It hurts me every day, bro. Yo, bro, he, listen, he always talked about you, bro. That's my best friend in the world. Yeah, bro, he always world, talked man. about you, bro. Yo, Nobody loved me more than that that's nigga. That's a fact, bro. Oh, listen, on my mama, bro, God is my witness, bro. He talked about you. He talked about Driz. He talked about Dids. He talked about um, your, day brother, one, man. your brother. Day he talked one, about man. Skank. He talked about Squirt. He spoke about all you guys. He loved you guys, bro. Tremendously, bro. And, and the way he had it, bro, he didn't mind giving it, bro, at all, bro. Like, bro. He gives you his last. His last. He'll you know give you his saying? last, bro. Bro, this dude saw what I was doing for the community. He said, your pastor, your bro, I take care of mad people. I've been who he took care of mad people, bro. He said, you know what, yo, bro? I'm going to show you something, bro. He got like over like no cap, like me, like two, two, two or three thousand, two, two to three thousand pizzas. And gave it away, bro. Gangsta. Like it was nothing. Bro. Dr drug money. Bro, this dude right here, bro, bro, this dude right here, no cap, bro. Yo, he helped, he helped, he helped, he, he stopped crackheads from doing crack, bro. Get jobs. 
gave people opportunity, bro. Taught them how to make money, bro, selling weed. You feel me? You know, at the time weed was illegal, but now weed is legal, you know, because, you know, you know, white people's involved in it, you feel me? Which is not a bad thing, but bro, this dude was really putting people in position, bro. No cap, bro. Like, really, really, like, these, he really loved these guys, bro. He would give his life for I would any of life. his brothers. I and these guys would do the same I thing. I would do life for him, bro. But, yeah, it's a fact. I got receipts. This is a fact. This is a fact. Him, but anything, why do you think he was so time. loved? Why do you think he was so loved? Because he was genuine, loyal. Wow. Bro. That's fact. And why do you think he was so respected? Yeah, I'm more fear than love. You know, he, you know told me, so he told me that he, he didn't like that fear stuff. So he didn't want people to love him based on fear. He would always tell me that. Because you know, he told they, me. He told they me, feared me and my brothers more. Now he respected y'all, you know, bro. They he, feared me and my brothers now they did, more. They did, they did. But Mancho was smart. He never had to do shit. That's why they feared him the way they did. Wow. Because he never had to do shit once me and my brother was on deck. That's real, that's real. And what, and what, that's what makes him wife. That's why they feared him. Because he didn't have to do shit. And, and the he respect? Could get it done. And the respect? You know what I mean? Came because? You know what I mean? My boy ain't had to tell me when he upset. I know when he upset. You play with him, I'm gonna play with you. Wow. You know what I'm saying? He didn't even have to say, do anything. Me and my brother was on him <laughs> like white a, on rice. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? He, he, talk your talk, bro. I see him screw up his face, I'm screwing up your face. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He didn't have to tell me to do nothing. I nah, already knew him. That's a fact. And I know he gonna do it for me. That's a fact. You know? That's a fact. I remember the days when we used to go to junior high school. I used to go pick him up every day. Niggas yeah. try to jump him while him. I'm like, yo, y'all niggas bugging. That's my brother. I'll kill one of y'all niggas. From little nigga, I'm growing up out here born and raised. They already knew who I was. Yeah. When they seen how I was jumping out the window for him, me and my bro, that's what made niggas fail. I want to ask you, they said that when he was 16, he got his first car. 15. 15? Younger than that. <laughs> I started driving at 12. <laughs> he started driving at what? 13? Oh, man, I got that wrong, bro. 15, 16. <laughs> Man, we was driving since we was teenagers. We used to drive to school. He type never used to go to school. You know? <laughs> That's one thing about that nigga Mancho. He never liked to go to school. But you he know how to make money. I used to come pick his ass up. You know me, Mancho, we used to go to Wingate. Yeah. Him, me, Marlon. That nigga, I go to pick him up, I never go to school. Yeah, you know? cause wow. fuck with him. We smoking weed. We trapping, making money. We like, fuck school. <laughs> at that age, at that time, we making so much money. We like, what the fuck we wasting time in school? That's you know what I'm fact. saying? That's a fact. So I ain't even mad. That's a fact. Cause it's one thing I could tell you about Mancho, man. He, he know how to make that chicken. <laughs> yeah? Legit. Under, he taught me that shit. How, you much, how, much, how much you think you seen? Over, over 100,000? <laughs> <laughs> <Man, wow. laughs> that building's a million dollar building. The building we grew up in is a million dollar building, you know? Yeah? We ran through a million dollars in that building, drug money. You know, we ran through a lot of money. Spurs, took L's. You know? Well. I ain't gonna hold you, man. If Mancho was alive, bro, that nigga be triple what he was worth when he died. That's man. a fact. You know? That's a fact. I, I would never be broke if my bro was That's alive. a fact. Well, you ain't gonna you know? be, but we involved now. Nigga, it's loyalty and royalty. That's a and fact. You ain't, you ain't going nowhere. But I'm telling you, I would have been in a better situation, bro. Nah, it's not over. You know what I'm saying? No, no. it's not. It's not. You know? Facts. We but, Remember when I tell you, man, yeah. my bro was here, shit would have been different. That's a fact. Shout out to him, Junior Skank. That's a fact. Squirt. Yo, I wanna... He might, and we won't forget I, you, yeah, nigga. That's a fact. Puny Rex. Yeah. I said, actually, Gosh, right? Why would you consider to, why would you consider Macho to be a gangster and a gentleman? Everybody thought he was a gangster. Macho wasn't no gangster. <laughs> Macho was neutral. Wow. He stayed around the gangsters, though. Yeah. Only flag you see Mancho is that Jamaican flag, you know? Wow. That nigga Mancho ain't, ain't gang affiliate, but you would have thought he was. Because everybody around him gang affiliate. Wow. And we respect him and love him like he was the big homie, even though he wasn't gang affiliate. Wow. I can tell you that. That's crazy, bro. He pulled him at seeds. <laughs> Shout out to him, man. Yo, but, but, but also, okay, why, why, would you, why, would, why would you consider to be a gentleman? Cause I'm gonna tell you something crazy, right? When I be walking with him, people would fear me walking with him. Why do you think is that? Like every time I walk with him, people would fear I'm walking with him. We got more fear than love. I understand, but my thing is that you said he was in a gangster. I, I, the persona. I mean, 
like he like like this big bro. He with the gangsters. Like, yeah, no, I'm like, 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 like you know, I'm a big bro. Like you, I'm a, all the big homies. You are guilty due to your association on okay. the Okay. 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 We grew up around serial killers. Yeah, facts. You facts, know what I mean? Facts, facts. When we came off the steps, we was already just about who was around us yeah, yeah. the time and era on yeah, our yeah. block. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then when they found out we was doing it, yeah. That's when the fear came. Okay, but okay. But it was there already. Okay, okay. We just That's a fact. Came off the stool and picked it off how That's they a fact. showed it to us. Why, why do you why you why why do people consider to be a gentleman? Because he's a gentleman. Why then was that? Because he's smooth. Mm. Respectful. You know what I mean? Smooth with the ladies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was here with the ladies. The type of nigga to help your grandmas with her bags. You know what I'm saying? Wow. He, he ain't the type of nigga. His heart was pure. You know what I'm saying? Wow. He had a good heart. As much as they talk and say it's bad shit, it's one thing about him, he had a good heart. Mm. You know what I mean? How was he like as a businessman? And how many people did he put in position? That's the first question. How many people he put in, in position? Business-wise, Mayweather, man. Mayweather. And boxing, you know? Okay. Championship. Let me tell you something, bro. Uh -huh. I remember when we got our first smoke shop. You heard? Who was it at? This was at? In Arizona. Okay. I'm in a complex next door. We used to go fuck with some A-Rap niggas that used to be in the parking lot. Yeah. One day we pulled up with my son. I'll never forget this day. He ended up getting locked up that day, too. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say for what, right? Boy, we jumped out the car. <laughs> the A-Rap niggas that we fuck with, that we go behind the yeah. counter and chill with, they was getting beat up by some 6'3 Mexican nigga. Big, like 350, 6'3. I jumped out. Face jumped out, Mancho jumped out. I got my son with me yeah. in the car. I'm time there, Mancho driving a red charger, you right? I say, yo, Mancho, ain't that your boy, son? He like, yeah. I jumped out, snuffed the nigga. He popped on the nigga. We, we beating the nigga up. We beat the nigga up. When we, yo, punch his tooth out, fucked him up badly. Police, they call 911, police pulled up. <laughs> Bro. We got the charger, my son in the car. We had to split, the police came rushing us. We beating this nigga while police rushing us. They in the park already seeing us. Wow. They went for his ass, tasing him. What? <laughs> I took my son out of his back seat took, uh, and ran with my son. They well, tasted me on, my son three years old at the time. Wow. Threw him on my shoulder. You heard? What saved me, cause my crib was next door to the store. The complex was right next door to the shopping center. Wow, you wow, get wow, me? Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, I hit this a uh, four feet wall with my son. Wow. Ran up the steps, got to my crib. So I, I, <laughs> I was out of breath, son. I got to my door, dropped my son at the door, and pushed him in there and closed the door and passed out in front of the kid. So if they were chasing me, I was saying to my son, like, as long as my son Gucci, yeah, he's good. Yeah. But if they, if they see me running here, wow. they're going to just lock me up. I, I brought him to his mom's, you wow, know what wow, I'm saying? Wow, wow. I can't catch no ACS case, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That nigga Mancho got tasted. You know? <laughs> when I see the nigga got tasted, I took my son off the back seat, took off. He the only one got locked up. Me and Face got away, you know? Wow, wow. We laughing. But that was a blessing in disguise. Because the next day we went to the same store. He said, yo, my cousin's selling a smoke shop. 30 bands. 30 bands? 30 bands. That nigga said, yo, give me 10 pounds, give me 10 pounds, give me 10 pounds. Sold it, and we bought that smoke shop. The Just next like day, that? The next day. The next day? The next day. I, I have to ask, wh 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 why the Arizona move? He was making a lot of money in the Heights. Why the Arizona move? What he wanted it? something different. He always wanted bigger and better things. You know? This was just a stepping stone. Mm. You know? This was a stepping stone, man. So let me ask you this. How many people we put in position? More than I could count. Because <laughs> if you didn't do it for you, I did it for you, or my brother did it for you. You know what I mean? Wow. But that ain't nothing to talk about. But in the day, we need more guys like him. Why think it's that? Because you don't find niggas like that no more. You know? I tell you, man, ain't nothing. I call him anytime, anywhere, any place. He going to do it. I ain't got to ask him twice. That's a fact. He ain't got to ask me twice. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. And it was, like, he always had that love for me and my brother the way we had it for him. You know? That's crazy. What you might, what you might admire about, what you might more about his friendship? Lawyer. Lawyer. We argue, we fight, don't matter. But I can still 
depend on. That's a fact. He's reliable. He ain't gonna never disappoint you. Okay? We go at it. That's a fact. Back and forth. That's a That's fact. I, want, I could do and you can't. I'm gonna shoot you. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's true. What's your mind about his personality, man? He yeah. always want to have fun, man. Yeah, facts. That nigga always joyful, bro. That's a fact. You know what I mean? Nigga. That nigga always joyful, you know what I'm saying? I didn't say less. Appreciate you. Love you, facts. I'll be quick. Okay. All right, babe. You good. I'm about to reset. I can tell. All right, babe. All right. Later, bro. You know how I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, facts. <laughs> I'll be down in like an hour. Yeah. So you say you like to you say you like you like to have fun. Yeah. He like yeah, fact, life of the party. Yeah. Always like to dance. Yeah, facts. Yeah. See, this was the shit. Right? Yes, that's a fact. <laughs> this was his dance. That's a fact. Right, that's you know? a fact. Also, too, like when you like when you go with him too, like when I go about him too, like you go out to eat, he paying bottles is on him. He paid for bottles. Nah, he, he's a good host. He a good host. You know, he, he you know how to treat the family. Yeah, facts. With love, you know. Right, right, right. One thing you, I could say, yeah, if he fuck with you. You ain't gotta worry about nothing. You know yeah, what I'm facts. saying? Facts. What you think he hated the most? What he hated the most? About the game, like the the the, the weed game. Cause y'all selling weed. You feel me? So what do you think he hated the most about the, the L's. game? The L's, right? The losses. <laughs> the losses. I remember, how many, I remember how many when the, I remember the feds rushed us in Arizona. What? But it was legal though, right? Nah, not then. <laughs> You know, I got rushed for 15 pounds a week. Wow. You know what I mean? And he sent me that shit. Wow. One thing about him, he don't listen. I told him don't send no more over here. He sent that shit. Because he want to make more money. And that nigga's money hungry. Yeah, money hungry. One thing I love about him, though, he used to always tell me, bro, move, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Because I used to put all my shit in one, one basket. basket. And then when I take an L, I'm crying like, fuck. I'm scratching the bounce back. He looking at me like, yo, bro, that's why you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, here's a plate to start off back again. Yeah? He always... <laughs> Suck me out the mud. He always make sure I was Gucci, right? That's real. You know what I mean? That's real. Shout out to him, you know That's what I'm saying? Fact. That's a fact. Legend or a Crown Heights legend. Why would you consider to be a legend? Crown Heights legend. Why do you consider me to be a legend? <laughs> uh, I don't know you, how to answer that you question. You really want to know? Because cause the way you did it. The way you did it, the way how you did it. You, you did it, you did it, you did it right. You he, did it right. You he, lived in- he ain't do it any different. No, he did it. Like, right. But he, he was, he was a movie, different. like your movie. He ain't do it any different. Yeah, he so, was a movie. The same reason I'm a legend is the same reason he would. Yeah, be a yeah. You know what I'm saying? He did it right. He like he, he lived life, bro. Yeah, he paid. He, he paid the way for us. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like how we paid it for him, but yet what made him different? Legend. Same shit that made me. That's a fact. Original. Authentic. Yeah. Organic. You know what I mean? Original. That's a fact. You no? Know? I can't even explain that. No, no, no. That's some explanatory. Yeah. I got to ask you what made me a legend because I still be trying to figure this shit out. <laughs> every day. You know what I'm saying? But it's the way you do it. It's, it's swag. It's persona. It's, it's, it's putting people in position. Yo, believe it or not, I did for all this power and respect back if I can have all my bros back. That's real. Bro. Yo, that's it, bro. Yo. Macho, we love you. Macho, we celebrate you. This is just the first portion. We're going to have other people say their piece. Yo, the Macho story. Crown Heights legend, Brooklyn legend. This is the man, Crown Heights, the big Zoe. I'm here celebrating my man. I love you, bro. Rest in peace. Your name will always be remembered, for sure. It's, it's a pleasure to, um, you know, I, I was supposed to do this thing, put this out like a year and a half ago. But, you know, you saw the trailer and you love the trailer. Um, I want to just first thank you. Um, we want to promote your, your, what you're doing, what you're doing in this community, what you're doing is wonderful things in this community by really just being an entrepreneur. So we're just going to just start and everything like that. Um, first question I just wanted to ask you is um, basically this right here. So that first thing I wanted to ask you is um, tell me about, you know, Macho's upbringing, his mother. You know, we're gonna start with that and everything. Well, Muncha's mom, she was a, I would say, a godly person. Well, young. She died pretty young herself. Okay. She was a, a, I would say, a go getter. She was a hustler. She, you know, she do what she had to do to survive. Mm. 
Yeah. She wanted someone to sit on and cry about being broke. She tried. Okay. Whatever means necessary. Mm. She was gonna try. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. And and did, and did she you... love that kid? Someone who loved that kid. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, wow, wow, wow. What'd you say? Mm -hmm. What'd you say? Yes, I say love you, daddy, already. <laughs> Alright, say happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Do you remember the first time Macho came out here from, from Jamaica to, to New York? Yeah. How old was he at the time? Uh, he wasn't even 12 yet, I think. He was okay. About, he was about between 10 and 11 years old in age, right? Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. What, what is your fondest memory of him when he was, when he was, a, when he was a kid? What, what stood out to him? What stood out to you about him? Mancha. Yes, yeah, okay. Mancha come to America and within two weeks it's like Mancha did not born in America. Mancha know everywhere, know everything. <laughs> Do everything. Mancha Mancha just come to America, you know. To tell you oh Mancha was a curious kid and wanna live the American dream. Mancha stay home and all all that thing for internet that I wrote a route of bed. Deliver to my grandmother house, you know. Wow. Mancha had a bed and bed deliver. Um, he was just like that. He was. He, he, he wasn't so. Mancho was just. He just. He never sit down and. Be it. Mancho was. Mancho get up and run. Wow. Yeah. Mancho not. Mancho get up and run. Mancho not creep. You know. So basically, he's he, 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 he the lazy. Him, he, so he, he just tries. He's always trying. So so, not, so so he was he was in a leash. He was in a leash. He was just a, a go getter. A yeah, a hustler and work. Them little kids used to, let me tell you this, them kids used to walk and shovel snow to make their money, you know. Wow. Shovel out people, drive here, shovel out cars. Them got to market, them pop bags. Them have a next thing with them used to run. Mm. With the clipboard and the, um, the, 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 the soccer team thing. Them look boy to get them thing. Clip up on them clipboards so them have them soccer team and them need them uniform and walk and pick up them donation. Them buy cookies and candies and walk and sell them things. <laughs> wow. They were destined to be entrepreneurs. Them never, them look about they never devote a lag ahead and all. Them, uh, I swear, you know how some kids, oh, they not look on even the hustle in the jungle. No. Them try every other else kind of hustle as little kids. I mm. swear. Wow. So basically, that the, the, the hustler mentality, the entrepreneurship Something mentality was, born in him, man. But was, was in him. And, and, yeah. and, and he made it look good and everything, right? Exactly. All right. So, but now I'm going to say kids not do things in them, but I'm not lie. Yeah, of course not. Because at throwing, throwing cups, the first time he even knows that my son I cut school, you know, when Mancho come to America, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. At throwing cups, carry them home. Mm. And the cop them stand up in the house and tell me, say, beat them. Mm. Just don't poke out them eye. Don't hit them in the eye. Don't break the skin. Beat them. Wow. Because the man say, I see, these are good kids. No, stand they up They plan. God. They plan when they cut in school. <laughs> they plan this. The cops them say, them watch them. None of them not go to the same school. Everybody know where to meet up. No. Mm -hmm. It definitely, definitely is either. Okay, so next question I'm going to ask you, right? So if you had one word to describe Machuk, right? Mm -hmm. What would it be and, and, and why? If you had one, to, if you had one, one word to describe word. him. That one word? Mm-hmm. He was adventurous. Mm-hmm. Why, why adventurous? Because Mancha never look at anything as a challenge. Okay, that's a fact. Nothing was a challenge. Mm. When Mantra got up and left New York and went out of town, Mantra had nobody out there. He just went out there and decided, say, I'm going to make it happen, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. it was, he was an adventurous person. It sure was. And he was a, a you know, very charismatic person, yeah. too. Facts. Very, very charismatic. Yeah. I love to smile. Okay, yeah. how was... How was your interaction with him and how did he make you feel as a person? Who? Uh, Mach, how did he make you feel as a person? I know for me, he made me, he made me. Okay, he, like I said, yeah. right? Mancho and my son, Mancho is my little cousin. Yeah. But Mancho and my son is more on an age group level. Yeah. And I'm not gonna lie, 
even do like me say my son never do like whenever man him there were man there me just know that he's around somebody who's gonna protect him yeah yeah i knew that um Mancha was the last time I spoke to Mancha, it's like Mancha knew that was gonna be his last time in New York, you know. Last time I spoke to him. Things that Mancha was telling me and talking to me about like he wanted the family to come together, he wants us to this, he wants us to that. I don't know. It's like he had things worrying him. Wow. Maybe he foresee, maybe he knew, because he was dead within two weeks after the last time I saw him. Wow. Yeah. That's real. Yeah, but he was begging for the family to come together for us to have a reunion. And he was telling us that, you know, things gonna get better, he's doing good. Now he was doing great. Yeah. Every time he came back, he was larger than life. Yeah, and he's that's Every time what he, he came saying. back, he was larger than life. And, yeah. and and what they love about him too, like every time he can you know there's certain people there's certain key people he will call. Yeah. Myself, this, me Woods, me your, your 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 son. Listen, go out to eat is on him. Drinks is on him. Mm -hmm. you, you know, he, every time he came, he said, yo, yo, your pastor, I'm up. Yo, where, where we going tonight? Yo, well, it's on me. Yeah. Don't worry about that. You know, that's 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 what it but was. Every he was time yearning he came, for this big family reunion. Yeah. And he wanted that. He wanted the family to come yeah. together. Yeah. He wanted everybody to come out to Phoenix to have a good time. Yeah. He wanted to be this per he wanted to be the host. He's like he's saying he wants to keep something for the family and we all come out and have fun. Yeah. Oh god. He was beg he was begging that we would come out there for um Thanksgiving and yeah. do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've, I've actually, why, why do you think he was so, um, so loved and respected? Because of who he was and how he was brought up. Mm. Mancha was brought up in love, so he didn't know nothing about love mm. and discipline. Wow. Love and discipline. That's what we grew up with. Love and discipline. Mm. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. um, also, wh why you think, um, why would you consider to be, to, be, to be a gentleman? Why would you consider to be a gentleman? Remember, I'm granny growing, you know. Okay, how was okay. that interaction? I want to tell you, Mantra and his grandmother had the greatest love, I tell you that. Much. Wow. This is where Pastor Santa come out of Mayo Crown Heights. If you know, you know, you're. I'm with my two brothers, legends, you heard? Crown Heights legends, you heard? You know, I ain't gonna say the other name, but my man, I don't know, you, you want me to give a shout out to my brother or no? Yeah, yeah I got a shout out to my man, my man March, you heard? Yeah, yeah. My man Rels, my man, my, 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 my man Did, you heard? Listen, if you know, you know, these guys are upstanding guys, true gentlemen, you feel me? Men of the community, men of the people. I know these guys since I was a little kid, you feel me? And yeah. they've always been good to me, you heard? Listen. Celebrate your legends, celebrate your kings, you heard? They wait until they die, you heard? Funerals don't count, spread love man. now, you heard? Yes, <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> I got the OGs laughing! Look at my son! He geek, you heard? Come on, the man finds the big zoe. I'm on my brother, the legend, you heard? Hilltop's finest, you heard? Crown Heights finest, the big homie. The big OG, my brother, Macho. Now, I want to say some good things about him. Uh, this is a man of principle. He's a great husband. He's a great father. He's a great businessman. He never told, he never folded. He's the type of guy, he will always put your position on prison. He's a good man right here. He's an honorable man right here. We need to honor this guy right here. He's a street legend. He's something to celebrate. He's a good, good man. And he's also a man of faith, too. He's a good man of God, good man of God. So, God first. God first, you know what I'm saying? God first. And God never lies. Anything you got to say about your brother? What I got to say about my brother is he's the realest pastor in the whole Brooklyn. No disrespect to the other pastor. It is what it is. But anyway, I know this guy since I was a kid. 
And all he did was show me love, motivate me. We talk a lot on the phone. And he's a 100 person. Anybody got something to say, you already know. Yeah, that way. Yeah, man. Philip is the flipping yeah. way. Philip is the cross way. Yeah. Let's get it. You're at Hilltop. You're across street. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah. Feliz Navidad. Positive.